Good morning. I've got a book today that is older than me. And it's a really good book. It's called Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, I'm going to take this sleeve off. This is a protective sleeve because it's a hard-backed book. So, Where the Wild Things Are. It's a really wide book as well. Gosh. You don't see books with pages that clean and empty very often, do you? How interesting. Where the wild things are. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. Oh, he's chasing a dog with a fork. His mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. And grew. And grew. Until... His ceiling hung with vines, and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max, and he sailed off through night and day. And in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Until Max said, Be still! And tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened. And they called him the most wild thing of all. And made him king of all the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Oh, ba ba rumpa. Oh, all hail King Max. Now stop, Max said, and he sent the wild things off to bed without any supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely, and he wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then, all around, from far away, across the world, he smelt good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild thing, things cried, Oh, please don't go! We'll eat you up! We love you so! And Max said, No. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. What a super story. I wonder, I wonder lots about this story. I always wonder about how you feel about Max being sent to bed without any supper. Was that a good choice? 
or was that a bit too mean from his mummy? But then when it gets to the end of the story, his supper is waiting for him outside his bedroom. So, the other thing I love about this story, did you notice the pictures? At the start of the pictures, Max's picture is tiny and there's lots of empty space on the page and a tiny little picture. And as the book goes on, the pictures slowly become bigger and bigger and bigger until... That's all of our one page. Then it spills over onto the next page. Then it gets even longer. Then it starts to take up almost the entire page. And then it fills the page. And then as Max leaves the wild things and starts to sail back home, the pictures start to get smaller again and smaller and back to a single page and back to no picture at all. I wonder why the author chose to have different sized pictures on different pages. <laughs>